What's going on everyone, Tech Me Out here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing with all of you what is on my MacBook Pro. So if you're excited about hearing this, go ahead and let me know by hitting that like button down below. And without any further ado, let's talk. All right, so to kick things off, my workstation is a MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch, the late 2013 model, and I have a 2.3 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor inside, 16 gigs of memory, and 500 gigs of storage. So yes, this is my main workstation. This is where I get everything done, including making my videos. So in this particular video, I'm gonna be focusing more on what is in my dock. So I will be showcasing my launch pad as well, but the primary focus of this video is gonna be my dock. So I'm gonna kind of skim through the default apps such as Finder, we all know what that is. <laughs> and Launchpad, I have this down here so I can quickly launch all of my applications when I need them. I also have the default mail app here. So I don't use a third party mail client of any kind. I do have a third party mail client that I love, which is Spark, but it's currently only offered for the iPhone. And I talked about that recently in my What's On My iPhone video. So I'm just gonna link that down below as well as put on a clickable link up in the video. But I love Spark, I didn't find it for Mac, so therefore I only use the default mail app at the current time, which isn't too bad. When it comes to web browsing, I pretty much use Safari for the most part. I also like to use Photoshop to edit my thumbnails as well as other graphics for my website, which if you haven't visited, you should go ahead and check it out. It's techmeoutnow.com. And I'm also in the process of making some merchandise. Yes, that is still in the works and I'm creating the designs and this is what I use to do so. I think Photoshop even now offers a suite where you can get this for like $10 with Lightroom and a bunch of other stuff. So it's a little bit more affordable than it used to be back in the day because it used to run it like $600 or more. And that was your only purchase option. Now this next app here is a lifesaver. So I'd first like to thank Dashlane for introducing me to this and also for helping make this video possible because I can't tell you how many times I forgot my passwords, but with Dashlane here, you have a safe and central place to easily store all of them. Now rule of thumb when it comes to passwords, in case you didn't know, is to use a unique password for every account. But honestly, with so many accounts, it's difficult to remember all of them. So this free app here helps eliminate that problem for me. It doesn't require much to understand it as it guides you through everything you need to do to get started. And I personally love the way everything is neatly organized because it makes it so much easier for me to find what I need. And I also like that I can rest assured that my information is safe due to its patented security technology. And also because it's stated to be one of the most secure and capable form fillers available. Which means if you're feeling lazy, there is a way to make Dashlane fill out your forms for you when necessary. Plus it's accessible across all of your devices and that includes your iPhone, Android device, and your Apple Watch. So you can have your password passwords with you at all times, regardless of what device you're on. Now the best part of all of this, in case you didn't catch it before, is that the app is free. So you can check it out for yourself via the link down below. They do have premium features as well that include backing up your passwords in the cloud, syncing it across all of your devices, and also granting account access to specific people. Now a link to save 10% off of the premium membership is also going to be supplied down below, so definitely check it out. Now for my web browsing, not only do I use Safari, but I use Chrome as well. I tend to use Safari the most, but Chrome is my alternative if a website isn't loading correctly or if it only allows you to access the website or content through another web browser. That's typically when I start to use Chrome. Skipping over App Store, I have Final Cut. If you didn't know, this is what I used to edit all of my videos with. I started off in iMovie and then shortly migrated over to Final Cut and I absolutely love it. It does everything that I needed to do. And if you're not familiar with it and you're curious about it, it's really like iMovie on steroids. That's the best way I can put it because it's so similar to iMovie, but you have pretty much unlimited possibilities. So this is what I predominantly use when it comes to video editing. Now I also use numbers um, quite often for statistical and analytical information, like just record keeping type of thing. And when it comes to recording audio for my channel, I do that using Audacity. So Audacity is free and it gives me pretty much just the cut and dry of what I need to edit my audio. It's actually what I'm using to record this video using my Blue Yeti. So I just plug my Blue Yeti into my MacBook, open up this application, hit record, and then I do some noise reduction through effects here. And that's really it that I do to it. And I think I amplify it a little bit as well so I can project my voice if it's being recorded too low. But ultimately, this is what I use to record my audio. Now, when it comes to my scripts or just creating documents in general, I do use pages. Um, so this is my go-to to create that type of thing. I also have photos down here. I don't really use it too much, probably not as much as I could, but ultimately this is where I keep pretty much most of my pictures, if not all of them. I just could be a lot better at organizing them. 
but I know at least they're here. <laughs> and then I use the default Twitter app, you know, so I don't have a third party app of any kind that I use. I just use the standard Twitter app. But if you have a Twitter app from Mac that you recommend, drop it down below because I'm willing to check it out. And that's something else I forgot to mention. If you also have a mail app that you recommend aside from the default, because I'd like to explore some other options to give me some more features, but, but ultimately this does what I need. It lets me check and see if anyone has, you know, reached out to me via Twitter via mention or lets me check my messages or take a look at my profile. So it does what I need for the most part but I'm still open to more. Now I also use stickies. I pretty much come here to jot down things that I want to remember to do. So I do use that to sometimes keep things right on my desktop in the forefront of things that I need to know. I also have Microsoft Word up here. I really don't come here other than to just make sure a document is formatted properly. So if you're not aware and going from pages to Word files, sometimes the formatting gets a little messed up. And when formatting is crucial for me for that document, I will double check it here with Microsoft Word. I also have a Adobe Lightroom. So this is where I go and edit some of my photos. I've done a little photography work here and there. And when I have, this is where I typically go to make sure that everything is looking as great as possible. So this is where I do a lot of photo editing. Photoshop is where I do more so graphic work. Um, and then I also have Feedly here. So Feedly is where I come to get my updates in the tech world. I have this pretty much on all of my devices. So this is where I go to find out what's going on in the world of tech. And and then I have EOS Utility. At one point I was using this a lot, but not so much anymore. But ultimately I record my videos with the Canon 60D. And when I plug my Canon into my computer, EOS Utility will let me actually see what I'm recording. So in essence, I would then start to use my computer monitor as my monitor for my camera, but I don't do that much anymore. And then I also have Pocket down here. This is what I typically use to just store things that I don't wanna forget. So it's kind of like bookmarking, but not really really like bookmarking. I like to use this more so as a dump space for things that I don't really have the intention to bookmark but want to refer to later, such as shoes that I find on the internet or videos that I like on the internet or anything on the internet that I just don't quite want to have as a bookmark, which is more permanent for me and more so have it as just something to look back into. And I like it because you can sort things by pretty much the type that it is, as well as being able to view things by the tags that you've made. Then I have the default calendar app. Once again, not a third party app that I'm using there. This will slide in on to the next one. I have Spotify. Spotify is my music app of choice. This is where I come to pretty much listen to all of my music. I like it for its playlist options in terms of being able to save things for offline playback as well as its discovery options. So I really like the things that it recommends to you in terms of stations to kind of tune into. And currently I'm listening to this one called Release Radar. And if you watch Sisterhood of Hip Hop, I'm Her by Lee Mason, yeah. That's one of my songs that I'm currently enjoying. So yeah, that's pretty much it there. And then I have Messages. We pretty much all know what that is if we have an Apple device. And then QuickTime Player. QuickTime Player is actually what I'm using right now to record this video. But that is pretty much all of my applications here that I use on a regular. Um, so like I said, I'm not gonna really discuss what's in my launch pad, but I am gonna show it to you so you're getting a glimpse of that right now. If anything interests you, go ahead and pause the video, download it. And if you have a question about it, drop it down below in the comment section. But aside from letting me know any mail clients or Twitter clients out there that you would recommend, let me know your top three applications that you use on a regular on your MacBook. I'm always looking for something to help increase my workflow or just check out in general so drop those down below I'm curious to know what you're using but feel free to check out my other videos such as my what's on my iPhone video and stay tuned for my what's on my Android video it's possible it may have dropped before this and if it did I'm just gonna link it in here but if it hasn't then definitely stay tuned if you enjoy this video and you haven't hit that like button please do so now and be sure to hit subscribe as well so you can stay updated on all of my latest content and as always thanks for taking the time out to let me check you out